Super Bowl 25 MVP Otis Anderson is my special guest today. We're talking state of the current Giants. We're talking his memories. And he's got a new business venture that Giant fans and sports fans in general might find very interesting. That's coming up next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team Every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Trena, and welcome to a new edition of the Lachlan Giants podcast. On today's show, my special guest is New York Giants legend Otis Anderson, MVP of Super Bowl XXV, the second Super Bowl championship in Giants franchise history. Otis has a new business venture he's going to talk about called Signed. He's also going to talk a little bit about the current day Giants with me, as well as his career. And he has some memories and some inside scoops about Super Bowl 25 and of course his career. So really great interview, had a wonderful time catching up with Otis. And I will play that interview for you coming up next. All right, I am honored to be joined by New York Giants legend Otis Anderson, former running back, two-time Super Bowl champion, 1986-1990, Super Bowl 25 MVP, Rookie of the Year. I mean, this man has done just about everything, so I am very honored to have him. Otis, really appreciate you coming on. Now, Otis has a new business venture that he's involved with. He's going to tell us about it in a little bit. It's called Sign S-I-G-N-D. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, but first, Otis, um, I want to get your take on the state of the Giants. You know, the last decade or so has been kind of rough for the New York Giants. I don't know. I know you remain kind of involved, but from a distance at times. Sometimes you show up for the alumni events and whatnot. But what has been your take on, on the Giants, you know, deteriorating from basically from Super Bowl, uh, you know, 46 to where they are now. And what is your your expectations and how do you like what's being done so far for the future? Well, for sure, the Giants has been struggling for the last, I guess, 10 years and just trying to find the right mix. Uh, When you go through transition where you go through a coach that you've been familiar with for years, being Coach Tom Coughlin, and, and now you're starting to start all over with, with with new coaches and new GM. It takes some time. And that's why the Giants has been in turmoil because they've been trying to rebuild, but not quite with the right pieces. But they are trying to rebuild. And, you know, as Giant fans, we're not as patient as we were back in the day. Uh, we want instant results. So we're not willing to tolerate product that is not superior on the field or a product that is not worthy of us paying our money to come see. So the Giants decided that they are going to start over. As you can see, they got rid of all of the old coaching staff and brought in a whole new co- coaching staff. And and the GM is from Buffalo, the head coach is from Buffalo. So we are now the Buffalo Giants. <laughs> hey, not a bad thing. That team has won, what, three uh, – th- th- uh, three championship, well, not championships, uh, division titles in a row. They, they've been in the yeah. playoffs. And that's the yeah. team, of course, you guys beat famously in Super Bowl 25, and you ran all over them. Um, <laughs> you know, Otis, you, you mentioned the, the changeover. You, when you were with the Giants, I think you had Parcells for the bulk of your career, and uh-huh. you saw his growth as a head coach. What does it mean, though, to have that consistency? And as an alumni, when you see this constant turnover, does that really bother you well when you don't have the right players see players get coaches fired all the time people don't understand that and if you don't have the right players on your team then as a coach you're not going to win no matter what your philosophy is um they just don't get it you know you can't put an inferior product on the field against teams who have a a product that is greater than yours and the results going to come out all the time the same way they kind of make the statement what an idiot is. If you can do the thing over and over again and do this and get the same results, that's a sign of an idiot. So 
You know, you, you try to figure out not to be that kind of person. So you have to make transitions in order to keep up with time. And that's what you're seeing with the Giants. They're finally decided to go outside of management, go outside of what the norm of what they used to do as far as uh, interviewing and, and, and recruiting coaches. So this is the new to all of us. And we are excited. Uh, like you said before, Patricia, we got a general manager and a head coach who has been part of a, a, a regime that has been productive for the last four to five years. And we feel that having uh, Brian as our uh, head coach and, and then the, the, the general manager, we feel we head in the right direction. All right. Now, part of this direction looks like it's going to include Saquon Barkley, who, as we know, was the number two overall pick in 2018. Otis, you were a top pick because, you know, you had a lot of expectations being the first running back chosen in the draft. You look at Saquon Barkley, a lot was put on him. He had a pretty good rookie year, but injuries have kind of slowed him down a little bit. You went through some injuries, if I'm not mistaken, as well early in your career. And then you came back and you won comeback player of the year. Um, I think I want to say two years into your Giants career. Can you just talk? Can you just talk about that that whole you know process? You know, it, it's got to be frustrating. And then, first of all, you're coming to another team because you were traded mid season in 1986. You helped win the Super Bowl, and then, you know, you had that comeback campaign. And just how difficult is that for a running back? Because, in in you know, there's explosiveness. There's that ability to to cut and change direction. And when you don't have that, or it's not at full strength, I got to imagine it makes you wonder and second guess what you're doing. Well, you know, fortunate for me and unfortunate for, for Shaquan is that um, I never had surgery on any part of my body. Um, my rookie year, the last game of the season, I hyperextended my knee while I was playing against Chicago Bears, and I was leading the division in rushing, and Walter Payton beat me by five yards that year. I ran for 16.05, and he ran for 16.10. So, yeah, I had the whole offseason to worry about getting – getting uh uh, rebuilding myself and it takes some time you have to first learn to trust yourself and he had knee surgery so that's totally different from a hyperextension uh and not having surgery it takes roughly about two years so i think after last year he came back he showed that he can play he's developing the trust this off season will be just tremendous for him and then i think this year coming up he should be able to be productive like he was but Again, when you hurt yourself like that and you have an injury, it takes time for you to come back and, and, and trust your whole body and your mind will always want to protect yourself from injuries. So it's going to be hard to convince yourself. And, and you know, when you're coming off of an injury, and again, I know surgery is, is a lot different. Can you get that trust back? I mean, because, you know, it, it, I know I've had surgery and it's like, I tend to, to this day, still favor the part that was operated on, even though I try not to think about it. Is that difficult, you think? It, it is. It is. And like you said, um, he's just going to continue to work on it. And once you get hit on it pretty good, get down and get up and walk back to the huddle and, and don't feel any pain, then he knows he has recovered mentally as well as physically. But it's going to take for him to get a good lick on that leg. Um, I could see last year he was favoring it a lot, uh, some situations, and, and that's normal. But uh, this year should be good for him. Now, a lot of people obviously point to the offensive line and the problems that they had there, and I think we could probably all agree that they've had a little bit of a revolving door. That line sometimes hasn't played up to its potential. How much can an, a running back – help its offensive line or is it totally dependent on that offensive line well we're totally dependent on it uh for sure uh but what we can do to help the offensive line is when when a play is designed to go to that particular place or the hole is to is to execute it is to to do it and and you know and it's just continue to trust them that they're going to make the blocks and and that's where you develop that that uh that uh, continuity that you need with your offensive line by running the plays the way it's designed and not trying to avoid the play because you're not sure they're going to make a block or not. 
you, you just go ahead and execute. Do you see Saquon trusting that line? I, and again, I disclaimer, that line at times was, you know, questionable. I mean, but did you see a, a, maybe a little bit more instances where he was looking for the escape hatch, so to speak? Oh, he he has been running all his career with the Jazz with an escape patch. He, I mean, if you look at a lot of runs that he had made that he's been successful with, is he he bounced the plays outside. So he always had had a trust issue with the offensive line, and as they got worse, the trust factor uh, increased. So it'll be interesting to see what they put in front of him, as just well as Daniel Jones, DJ, same thing. I mean, he looks good when he has uh, the protection and and he trusts the offensive line. He looks good as any quarterback in the league. You mentioned Daniel Jones. This is a make or break year for him. We don't know if they're going to pick up his option year. Probably not. You know, financially, it doesn't make sense. But that being said, I mean, you know, they put playmakers around him. Kenny Galladay, who's got to get more touches. You know, Saquon, hopefully healthy year two. Um, hopefully a better offensive line. But where do you think Daniel Jones still needs to take the biggest jump to say, hey, I am a franchise quarterback? He got to read defenses better. I mean, he throws the ball into windows that don't make sense. Uh, I, 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 I'm I, not sure he's trying to force him or he just not seeing what he thinks he's seeing. And, and it's obvious in some plays where uh, – we're playing the Rams, and he dropped back and threw the ball to the flat, and there was a linebacker sitting right there. Like, you, you can't do that. So I think he has to get better reading defensives, defenses and see what they're trying to do to take away from him. Uh, and once he figured that out, he got a chance to be a pretty good quarterback. I like him. Yeah, I, he, he's got potential, definitely. But you're, but you're right, the mental processing aspect of it, Sometimes he leaves you sitting there scratching your head for sure. All right, Giant fans, we have more coming up today with Super Bowl 25 MVP Otis Anderson. But first, it's that time of year again as college basketball's tournament is finally upon us. And from all the latest odds, contests, and player props, betonline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores podcasts and news this season and it's not just basketball it's betonline.net is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information needs including live betting and your favorite vegas casino games so head on over to their website today or and catch up on all the trends and action bet online where the game starts we're talking with Otis Anderson. He is a Giants legend, Super Bowl 25 MVP. He was Rookie of the Year. He is still very much involved with the franchise, very fan-friendly. You see him at a lot of alumni events. And he has a new business venture with Signed, S-I-G-N-D, that we're going to be talking about in just a little bit. But Otis, before we get to that, I want to go back to your career. We, sure. we talked about it a little bit at the start of the show, but I want to go back and, and kind of get some of your fondest memories. I mean, you, everybody says that the NFL back in your day is a lot uh -huh. different than it is today. Do you see that? And what, what do you think the biggest difference is now uh, from when you were a player to where, where guys are now? I think the way the refs call the game, the way they call all of the penalties are totally different and, and, and confusing to a fan and sometimes to the player. What's interference? What's not interference? What's, you know, what's holding? What's not holding? You know, what's a, 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 a legal sh a block to the head? I mean, it's so many, it's so much of inconsistencies with the officials on rule mandation. You really don't know. And that's the part of the game that I think is so confusing to everybody else. We knew when we played, we knew what holding was. We knew what uh, interference was. There was no gray area. You knew it. I mean, it's so much now, it's hard to tell. So that's the big thing I, I noticed about the game is the way the game is being called and, and the way they protect the quarterback. Uh, back in the day, the quarterback did get hit. Now, you get close to the quarterback, and you got to be careful how you fall. You can't fall on him with your weight being totally distributed on him. That's a that's a big issue. But the NFL is talking about health and safety and wellness. I get it, but 
They make it a game soft. I was just going to ask you if you thought the game has gotten soft. And back Probably. in the day when you played, I mean, I'm sure safety and health were issues. I mean, I, I can't imagine that, that they had no regard for you guys in, at, at all. I mean, has that, am I correct in my assumption or do you think it's, they put more of an emphasis on it moving forward? No, I, I, we did. We we protect each other. We protect the people we played against. Nobody was dirty and nobody tried to do anything dirty. Um, you know, we always say in the, in the game that we play, you evolved into what the game was. You always had your head on a swivel. You always you knew where people were trying to attack you, and you knew it wasn't when people got hit. It wasn't because they didn't know it, it was because they weren't paying attention. Because film tells you everything. The eye in the sky don't lie, so it helps you understand uh, what is going on, and that's what you have to find out. Uh, and, and playing today compared to, to, to my era, we knew what was going on and we knew the risk and we knew where they were coming from. Now, when you came over to the Giants again, I mean, nobody wants to be traded away, I'm sure. You know, you, you had to start over, even though you had some impressive credentials to your name. What was that whole process like for you? And how quickly do you think it took you to, to implement yourself as a leader on that team? Uh, well, you know, it's like, yeah, you really got fired. That's what happened. I got fired. Coach, the organization didn't want me no more. They fired me, and then the Giants picked me up. So, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it was me coming to the Giants. They had a great team. All I needed to do was just fit in. Joe Mars was doing a great job, one of the best seasons he had in 86 as a, as a runner. Um, and all I had to do was just come in and don't mess it up. That's what Park Sales told me. He said, listen, kid. I don't need you to be the hero. I just don't need you to mess it up. And I was like, whatever you need for me to do, I'm, I'm going to do it. So it was easy transition for me because nothing was expected of me other than don't screw it up. Okay, that's a, that's easy enough, right? But that team also had a lot of, um, I guess, big personalities. LT, um, Sims was becoming starting to, to come into his own. Um, George, George, George Martin. Mar Harry, Harry Carson. Carson. Yep, yeah. yep. I mean, we, just, we just to be around those guys, I mean, must have been like, you know, especially a young guy like you coming over is like, wow, you know? Well, I, I look at it this way. It was a blessing for me because I played against them twice a year. Mm -hmm. So um, I, it, what they say about your enemies, you keep them close to you. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt when I got traded. I was like, okay, now my enemies are close to me. I know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry about them anymore. I see them. So it was a blessing for me to come to the Giants. Um, I was actually told back in 79 when I was being drafted, Ray Perkins visited me at Miami and told me they were going to draft me, that they wanted me seventh in the first round. So I thought I was going to be a Giant. Seven years later, I became one, but that's what they told me. And I think you were the first midseason trade in, in quite some time, if I'm not mistaken. That's how highly they thought of you to bring you down, you know, or, or bring you up from from uh, from St. Louis. So that that says a lot. And and I know I remember back then I was like, because I had wanted you back then. I was a you know a giant fan following oh, the team. Around, and I was like, <laughs> I wanted you. And and when they took Sims, I love Sims by the way. Sims was 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 my favorite guy. And I said, oh yes, we got both the guys that I wanted in the draft because I knew there was no way they were going to get both of you in the draft. You know at the time. No. All right, now yeah. I have to ask you about Super Bowl 25 because sure. I'm really curious about this. I wrote a book, you can see the cover behind me, yeah. and I know all about Belichick's plan on defense, but I never got the story on the offensive side of the ball because you ran, you went bonkers mm -hmm. and you just had it like the MVP performance that day. Can you talk about that game plan and how that kind of came together? Did it develop organically? Did you go in knowing that it was going to be that? Or, or can you give us the lowdown on that? Well, night before the Super Bowl, Bill Parcells and, um, and Ron Earhart, our offensive coordinator, called me to a private meeting and they said, listen, the only way we can win this game is run you to death. I mean, I'm not sure how much you can hold up on it. We can't sprinkle in day, make it play here, play there. He said, but the bulk of everything is going to be on you. My question to you is, can you do it? And what plays do you want us to concentrate on more? And I said to Bill, I said, keep me between the tackles 
Don't send me outside because that's a lot of energy to to turn the corners and go outside. And I remember him saying to me is, if we don't try to get you to the corner, they're going to start uh, piling everybody in the, inside the tackles and inside the ends. So every once in a while, we got to get you outside. And if you look at that Super Bowl game, two plays that I tried to go outside. One was down by the goal line when I got uh, sacked for a loss when a friend of ours missed his block. And the other time was when I went around the outside of the field and I did that famous wind, wind up punch to Mark Kessel. Those are the only two plays I went outside. Everything else was between the tackles. That's pretty difficult, though. I mean, because that's a lot of pounding. I mean, how did you hold up with all that? Well, I was older, I was bigger, I was heavier, uh, and I had great blockers. I mean, you know, William Jumbo Elliott, uh, Eric Moore, Bob Cratch, uh, Doug Riesenberg, Brian Williams, Bottles. I mean, I had great guys, Bavaro. I had great guys offensively that was committed to what I to what I did well. And that's what we built the game plan on what I did well. And that's why we were successful. What did that mean to you when, when coaches came to you and said, hey, Otis, we're going to put this on you? Uh, I had predicted when I came out of college 12 years prior to that, that if I played in the Super Bowl and I was the feature running back and was played in the state of Florida, I was the most valuable player. Well, in 89, the Super Bowl was at Joe Robbie Stadium and I was the feature back, but we got beat by the Rams and Flippin' Anderson, that great catch. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember sitting on my stool and having my hands in my face, and 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 uh, Maurice Carthon said, "Say, how you feel?" I said, "Oh man, my prediction that I had is no longer valid." He said, "What do you mean?" I said, "If I play in the Super Bowl, feature running back, state of Florida, I win MVP." He said, "Well, you know the next Super Bowl is in Tampa, Florida." I said, "Are you serious?" He said, "Yes." I said, "Maurice, we are going." That is my prediction. So as we went through that year. Even in San Francisco, when we lined up to kick that field goal, it was my destiny. I told Mark Ingram, it my destiny. In the Super Bowl with Lewis Tillman, I said the same thing to him. He said, he, you know, he always called me daddy. He said, daddy, are you going to win? He said, who's going to win MVP? I said, me. He said, well, why are you? I said, well, somebody got to win it. Plus, it's my prediction. And That's- sure enough, he was one of the first guys that ran to me and grabbed me and jumped all over me and said, you said it. And you did it. You said it, and you did it. That's all he kept saying to me. That's awesome. I yeah. mean, and, and I'll tell you, if you were the MV, you were the MVP of the offense, and I think um, Mark Collins did a great job on the he defensive did a side. Job. Yeah, oh he my did. goodness, he was beating the heck out of you know the, the, the Reed, receivers. Andre Reed, yeah, he, and Hall uh, of Famers, and and Jerry Rice, the the uh, in championship proud, game, yeah, yeah. and and he awesome. doesn't get enough credit for that. I think. You know, Belichick had a great game plan, especially when we went against the uh, the, the Bills. Mm. And he said, we're going to rush to and drop nine. Never heard of. Never heard of. He said, they want to throw. We want them to catch it, but we want to catch it in front of us, and we just going to knock the crap out of them. Mm. And had Buffalo figured this out earlier than what they did in the fourth quarter, it would have been a blowout. Because that offense that we was running was strictly set up for the pass, but not for the run. And you guys, if I'm not, if I remember correctly, you had, I think at the time, the longest offensive drive in Super Bowl history. I think it was to start, was it the second half? I think you started off, you, you, you yeah, just, we, ate, we, it was like eight yeah, minutes we, or something like that. Yeah, we started off with it at uh, before the half. And we came out of halftime, and we ran the ball and ate up the clock so much, so long, that Buffalo knew that whenever they got on the field, they had to play hurry up because they know when we got it, we was going to be methodical with it. One yard, two yard, three yard, one yard, two yard, three yard, one yard, no yard, two yard, three yard. So we 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 just wanted to just wear them out, just physically just tire them out. And you can see that's what happened. That's yeah. why – we start having success because we had wrote them down. Yeah, that was that was an, just the whole game plan on both sides of the ball. It was just so yeah. 
Amazing. All right. One more question before we get to signed here. Sure. No what's problem. some what's something that uh, about that team that you feel just hasn't been replicated, you know, a quality, uh, whatever the case may be, that hasn't been replicated yet in later generations of Giants teams, including the Super Bowl teams that came after that particular one? We liked each other. Okay. We did things with each other. Everybody was like a family. The running backs, we got together. The receivers, they got together. The linebackers got together. And we all hung out. I mean, like, linebackers hung out with linebackers, running backs, running backs. Receivers, they hung out with everybody because there was just, they were pigs. So they went everywhere. But we genuinely liked each other. And we made it our business to be a family. We felt that everybody inside that locker room was the people that we could trust other than our family members. And we addressed it that way. And that's what I see missing in the, this giant teams and the whole NFL. There's no family anymore. All right. Now, Otis, let's talk about sign. For, um, so this is a, a new initiative and it's spelled S-I-G-N-D. And what it mm -hmm. is, um, as I understand it, it is an opportunity for the diehard sports fan or or whoever, you know, a, a diehard fan looking for a unique gift to come to you and say, hey, I'd like to get a special item autographed. Um, they get a video with it um, from you, a personalized video. They, they, I guess they give you instructions, you sign it. Um, it is then shipped uh, to the recipient. What was it about sign that drew you to that initiative? Well, I, I have seen other companies out there doing something similar, but what we wanted to do differently was everybody could do a video, but when you get a piece of memorabilia, it takes that whole sequence and make it a life, a lifetime experience. And that's what we wanted to offer. So what we did was we came up with a way of sending our friends and family members and fans an opportunity to get not only a video message, but a part of memorabilia that they can have forever. As long as they keep that QR code attached to that item, they can play it for years and years and years. And the fact that the icons, which is what we call our athletes and male, female as well, it's an opportunity for us to stay relevant with our fans, you know. And like you say, anybody can do a video, but when you get a video and piece of memorabilia, now that's an experience. And you, of course, are sending everybody a signed football, a special commemorative signed football, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Well, we we have footballs that uh, individual could get. We got hockey pucks, hockey sticks, basketball, uh, baseball. We have the gamut of icons that are part of our side family. So whatever you need, and for the entertainment part, we have acrylics that are of the entertainers that uh, fans can uh, experience. And it comes with a QR code as well and a video message from that famous entertainer. So we just want to make sure that fans would never ever forget and a piece of history or a piece of memorabilia that will last a lifetime. Why is it so important to you personally to remain in touch with the fans? Well, just think about it for a second. You you take a coach who coached Pee Wee football and he watched this player move through the ranks. And just imagine we had side around when I came along and my coaches who coached me and we did a team video, which is where we headed at with this company, a team video thanking our coach for what he's done for us, coaching us. Now imagine that coach now who coached me back when I was playing Pee Wee football had got a video message from me and my teammates that he could look at and say, wow, I had a lot to do with the growth of this young man the production of this young man and this guy said thanks to me for all the coaching that I gave him 
That's what makes science so special. That's what makes us different from anybody else because we can give that. So think about the next uh, Aaron Donald, the next Shaquille Barkley, the next LT. They are out there, and there's coaches who are coaching them. But we don't know them yet. But just imagine getting a video from that that person who was thinking his coach forgot him to the point where he became a professional. And he got those memories and that thank you from that person. That That's what makes us special. That's what I love about Sign. And also Sign is very affordable. So the, the sports fan who is looking to get a, a signed football and a video message from yourself can do so. I, I know it's well under $1,000. I don't remember oh the exact price. Oh, my God, wait, yeah. That that thousand dollar way too much. Way uh, too much. It's yeah, well under a thousand dollars. That I was looking through some of the offerings of sign and and very affordable and it's a good deal as opposed to say cameo, which is a kind of a similar service, but all you get is a video. And the thing about cameo that I know I don't like because I've I've you know kind of played around with it is if you're lucky you get a thirty second message from the celebrity and you pay big bucks and big deal, yeah. you know. So, well, I, I, I listen. Um, I can't speak a lot on cameo. I am on cameo. I don't do it. They, they, I, early on, I was part of it, but I don't do it anymore. Um, but what I like about what we do is, we give you a lifetime experience with memorabilia. Anybody can do a video. That's that's one thing I have to get credit. There's a lot of companies that offer video, no doubt about it. But when you can get video and a piece of memorabilia and get it authenticated right in front of you. We signed the memorabilia right in front of the camera. So there's no mistake about authenticating it because you see it done. And that's what I like about it because it's not something that can be resold to the community or somewhere else because I'm gonna put your name on it. I'm gonna say happy birthday, Patricia, or thank you so much, Patricia, for having me on your podcast. And here's a sign of football from me. But you have many, many years of great success. You're going to remember that forever. Absolutely. And that's, that's kind of stuff that we do. We want, you gonna... to have, uh, we want you to have a lifelong uh, experience that will be never forgotten. And that's going to go on my shelf, obviously. If I, you know, I'm not a big memorabilia fan. You know, I don't collect a lot of that stuff, but something like that, if, for sure. I mean, now, are you the only, I'm, I'm sure there's other former teammates of yours that are on signed. Is that correct? Oh my gosh. We got over 400 uh, icons. That's what we call icons from hockey players to football, to basketball, to baseball. Uh, we are working with uh, tennis, working with golf. So yes, uh, it's ton of giants. It's ton of, you know, we're, we're spreading the market to, uh, all of the other players around the country global because we understand that uh being up here and where we started at inside we're heavy with giants and jets because this is the hub you know i mean if listen i always was told this if i'm gonna start something i'm gonna start in my back door and i'm gonna start where i have the most success and where is that new york new jersey baby you can't get better than that so yes we have a lot of giants uh, we have a lot of Jets, and we have a lot of Knicks, and we're working on all the other Nets and baseball, you know, Mets and Yankees. We do have players from those eras, a part of it. So, yes, you you can go on the website and pick your icon and receive a beautiful video message with a piece of memorabilia. And I also saw that, you know, when you first sign up, you can get 10% off. I, I happened to check that out before we started recording. So there is that discount to sign up and you get a mailing list that I guess announces new additions to the signed family and, and new opportunities and specials and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm part owner in case you didn't know that I'm a piece of, yeah, I help create sign and, uh, me and, uh, one of the other partners, uh, Howard, uh, Mongolese. We we worked hard to put this together. He picked my brain, and we took it to our, our group, Barry, and those guys, and we came up with uh, this product we're happy about. 
We had some great investors that believe in us, uh, some friends, some some superior uh, companies. And uh, we're slowly, we slowly take it on the market. We haven't done major advertisement, but we're starting to do so now. We finally got our icons in a position to where that uh, we could offer them some work because of request. So we're, we're definitely making strides right now. And it's awesome. That really is it, it, because, yeah. like I said, a two second, you know, a 30 second video, it's like, who cares? You know, you spend all that money yeah. and now you've got a, it's something that every time you look at the, at your shelf, you've got that and you've got the video to go with it. So that's, that's just a tremendous um, initiative you've started. Um, and I hope it really takes off for you and you continue to add and, and just, you know, have a lot of success with it. I, it sounds tremendous and great idea. Whoever came up with it. Thank, yeah. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, Otis, this was awesome. I really, really you. appreciate you taking the time. It was great taking a walk down memory lane with you. Hopefully the, this current giants team will, will turn it around. I think they're on the right path. I think, you know, better days are ahead. It's going to take some time, but, um, that I think they'll be okay. I, I really do. I'm optimistic. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what they say, Patricia, you got to crawl before you walk. So exactly. We, exactly. We're crawling. we crawling. But we, 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 we pull it up on the furniture, though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Good, good comparison. I love it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Giant Thank fans, make sure you check out Signed again, if that's spelled S I G n d you can do a search for mr anderson there and you can also see all the great uh athletes and icons that they have you sign up you get a 10 percent off discount um check them out and uh continued success to you otis hopefully we see you this uh fall or uh, this summer actually first you'll probably be yeah. in training camp i would imagine yep. and and also uh we'll see you this fall and and uh appreciate the time I appreciate you. And Patricia, anytime you see me, please come up and say hello. Absolutely. It, it would be my pleasure. All right, Jane fans, that's going to do it All for right. us on this show. Thanks to Otis Anderson. And be sure to keep it here on the Locked On Giants podcast. We'll have more all week long on your New York Giants.